Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to plan the structure of our game, how the game should look like when finished, and which resources might be helpful to you in this journey. We will also learn what are classes, and what is the difference between a class and a struct. Those two are quite similar on the surface, but are fundamentally different. Let's start by learning what is a class in D. A class is similar to structs. It is a programmer-defined type. Most of the features of structs apply to classes as well. However, classes can do a lot more in D than structs. Whereas in C++, classes and structs are almost identical. With classes, we can dive deeper into the topic of encapsulation. Remember, the unit of encapsulation in D is a module, but classes add more functionality to it. We can also use a very useful feature called inheritance and polymorphism. Inheritance helps some classes acquire members of another type, and polymorphism is the ability of a variable to take on multiple forms. Don't worry if that sounds confusing. We will cover these concepts in later videos in more detail. Let's create a class. The syntax is the same as with structs. It will contain a variable, a constructor, and a method that will print a message. All right. The fundamental difference between a class and a struct is that a class is a reference type and struct is a value type. That means classes are stored on the heap using the new keyword, whereas structs are stored on the stack. Hence, class variables may be null. It means that a class object does not reference anything. A successfully initialized object will point to some memory on the heap, otherwise it will be null. To determine whether a class variable is null, is operator is used. However, it is also possible to allocate a class on the stack using the scope keyword. But the scope keyword can do a lot more. By creating scope statements, we can do some cleanup or execute some instructions before leaving the current scope of the function. Another advantage of the scope statements is that they do not depend on the order of execution. It will always be executed before leaving the scope, no matter where you put them. There are three scope expressions. Scope success, which is executed if the scope exits successfully. Scope failure, if the scope exits due to an exception. And the last one is scope exit, which is executed regardless of the previous two cases. Now, let's discuss a different situation. Sometimes we would like to copy an already existing object. The logical way is to create a new variable and do an assignment operation like with any other variables. But it's a mistake. You aren't making a copy of that object. You are storing a reference to that object. Keep in mind, classes are stored on the heap. Hence, a class object stores a reference. To create a copy of that object, you can use a dop function, which takes advantage of its constructor to create a duplicate of the object. All right, it's time to plan out our game. We should definitely add a fully functional main menu, a play, helper option state, and exit state. We will learn how to switch between the game states. The gameplay itself will contain only a single level. We will load the map, add a few enemies, a player, but you can go even further and add more levels and features if you want. The final game should be similar in spirit to a 2D Mario platformer. We will not create a Mario clone. And finally, speaking of useful resources, it is a good idea to have the Programming in D book by your side. In case you forgot something, you can quickly brush up your memory. Also, check out the website about programming patterns called GameProgrammingPatterns.com. It is a free online book written by Robert Nystrom. A few design patterns we're going to use whilst creating the game are described and explained in this book. It is a wonderful resource for someone who's making games, containing a collection of mostly used programming patterns in games. That's it, have a nice day, and see you next time!